Praise be Jesus Christ. Now and forever. Praise be Jesus Christ. Uh, wait, where are the great saints of our era? Those uh, members of Generation X feel the pain in a particular way. Where's the Mother Teresa of today? Where's the John Paul II? Where's the Ron Reagan? He wasn't a saint, but that's fine. <laughs> Guys, I think God's plan for right now is not that the renewal of the church and of the world come through blazing, shining lights. And, and, and the shining light of a guy like John Paul II almost enabled the rest of us to be lazy in our faith. Hey, I'm with him could be the sum of evangelization and Catholic apologetics. Right? I mean, here's a guy who, I, I mean, it's, it's like a storybook. He rises from the midst of communism and all the oppression of an era to become a pope and then help liberate Eastern Europe and win back a generation of young people. Where is the shining light for today? I'm looking at it, guys. I'm not just saying that. I, I think this is God's plan right now. Not that a few torches light up the dark, but 10,000 microfires light up the dark. I think renewal in the church is going to come through men and women, but I'll say men for our purposes today, living in intentional friendship together and starting those microfires in real Christian community. Now, a word about friendship. We need friendships. We need friendships to be physically healthy. There was a Harvard study done over the course of 80 years, one of the longest studies ever done. They wanted to find out what set people up in old age for thriving. And they did everything from studying the shape of the cranium to the cholesterol. Number one factor was friendships. They have found it's healthier for you to smoke 15 cigarettes a day than to be lonely. It's healthier for you to have high cholesterol than to be lonely. So eat burgers, smoke cigarettes, just do it with friends. Put bacon on the burgers. You're going to be totally fine. Uh, kids, I'm kidding. You shouldn't. Uh, whatever. <laughs> There's a, a mission I, that we support in Haiti from our, our apostolate, Real Life Catholic. It's, we're an evangelistic mission, but one of the things we do is, is tied to a mission to the poor. There was a home for the dying at this mission in Haiti where they gave people a comfortable room to die in. Uh, because that's how impoverished this area was. There's an orphanage next door. The kids from the orphanage started playing with the kids in the home, people in the home for the dying, and they stopped dying, and it became an old age home. True story. We need friendship to be physically healthy, and I think one of the pandemics we've overlooked in the past few years is loneliness. And there's so much loneliness among men. And you don't realize when you step outside your comfort zone and just invite a guy to hang out with you, you, you feel like you're really putting yourself out there what you find is someone who's, who's in a desert, thirsty, who you just offered water to. We need it to be physically healthy. We need it to be spiritually healthy, too. I love thinking of the, the an, uh, image of the sequoia tree, massive tree, three-foot thick bark, 300 feet tall, lives to be thousands of years old, five-foot deep roots. That's it. Hundreds of feet wide. Interlocked with every other tree in the forest, and that's the only way it stands. It's the only way it grows to its glorious height. Guys, this is us. Saints, if you study the lives of the saints, they usually come in clumps. Clumps of saints. Little groups of friends. Look around this room. Your salvation is sitting around this room next to you. God has willed for us to grow together. Can I hear an amen to that? Guys, we have to be intentional about this and not be passive recipients and take it for granted. we gotta, we got to work to claim actual spiritual friendship. So here's a challenge for you. This is something I do in my own life. I have two small groups I'm part of, one with a couple guys and one with a couple couples. I meet each small group once a month. We start with a powerful friendship-forming question. Ready? Write it down. How are you? which we laugh, but you guys know as men, you can go away for a weekend with a bro, come home, your wife's like, how's he doing? Your response is, how am I supposed to know? <laughs> we just spent the weekend together. <laughs> yeah, we were fishing. <laughs> <laughs> kind of weird question is, how are you? No, I'm kidding. Um, 
we have to be intentional about asking that. Sometimes we get together for Bible studies. I think studies are great. Programs, Catholic programs are great. We, we create some of them at Real Life Catholic. It's wonderful. I'll tell you what, if you don't ask how are you and actually get to, I don't mean just how you're feeling today, but how are you really doing spiritually? How are you doing in your walk? How are you doing with the sins that you struggle with? If you're not intentional about being honest with people about that kind of thing, then all you have is study groups. And not, that's not fellowship. The, the, the resources that, that are offered to study are a crutch, and, I, and I, you know what? Take advantage of them. They're good. But the thing that that's supposed to spur on is you getting together and getting to know each other, for real know each other. So ask, how are you? Then you can study some resource. You know, we're offering some of Real Life Catholic but for the Advent resource, the Lent resource. There's a lot of stuff on the, on, on, there's the search, there's stuff on formed, there's stuff uh, on how, I don't care where you get the stuff from, I really don't. Make it your excuse to call a brother up and say, hey, I got this new thing, and there's, you know, it's four weeks. You want to go through this with me? There's your excuse. And then ask, how are you? Then spend time studying your Catholic resource, Then here's your closing question. How can I pray for you? Write it down. Pray for one another. Really pray for one another. Rinse and repeat that once a month. It'll renew your life. I'm not kidding you. Let me tell you what it also does. It renews the church. I obsess about what's wrong with the church, maybe too much. I obsess about how to grow, and success leaves, it, it leaves breadcrumbs, doesn't it? We look at our evangelical brothers and sisters, the churches that are growing and thriving. I'll tell you guys, the ones that are outgrowing Catholic churches, it's not because of great preaching. It's because of small group ministries. Saddleback in Southern California, <laughs> I'm friends with some people there, and they joke about being the largest Catholic church in Southern California. It's an evangelical church. <laughs> but it's full of ex-Catholics. Uh, they grew during COVID from 6,000 to 9,000 small groups. During COVID, while we all shrank. They have a 124% participation rate in their small groups, which means every single person in that church is part of a small group, and 24% of the people in the church, and in, in the small groups, are not yet in the church. They've had 50,000 baptisms since opening their doors. Now, a lot of those are theology different about baptism, but it always marks a converting experience. Guys, the secret sauce isn't complicated, it's simple. It's not easy, but it is simple, and we can do this. The source for renewal in the church, God is removing the blazing tortures and saying, it's yours now. The, the source for renewal and growth in the church, I don't think we're dead yet. I really think that what happens at some of these evangelical churches, we can do. But it's not up to our priests, it's not up to our bishops, it's not up to our pope, it's up to all of us saying, yeah, I'll do that. And simply calling or texting a friend and saying, I know we're friends, but can we meet once a month over coffee and be intentional about growing spiritually together? Maybe we'll study a resource, maybe not. But I just want to check in and say, how you doing, really doing, with three or four other guys while you eat your bacon and eggs, and how can I pray for you, and check in every month. And if there's an open door policy that if you meet someone who's maybe interested in your, in your church, instead of saying, come to Mass with me, which would confuse most people who are basically interested in Christianity, saying, Come get some bacon and eggs, or come over to my house for barbecue and a beer where we share faith and life together. And we'll grow. Can I hear an amen? amen. Be those micro fires. And I think it's one thing that I can feel in this room that sets this conference apart and sets what y'all are doing in Inferno apart is that this isn't just about a conference. This is about a fellowship. And I love when you're talking and showing pictures of your friends up there. This is about a, creating places, not just one conference where people belong, but a thousand small groups where people belong, and everybody here goes and starts one in this diocese. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, state your name. We'll start a small group. Even though I'm really not 100% sure what that even means yet. You'll figure it out. Invite your friends over. Trust me, you'll figure it out. God bless you.